Good morning. Welcome to Magdala. Wow, the sun is just emerging, but there's a lot of haze this morning. I didn't think we'd see it this quickly. I see it with my eye, and now you're going to see it in the camera in a second. There you see it, in the center of the screen. We have this little bird here. In Portuguese, it's called a curu curu. Let me see if I can catch her. Where am I? Here, okay, so she's down below here. There she is, look in the center of the screen. Look at that lady. I'm so happy to catch her for you because for a long time we've been hearing these birds and they drive so sort of crazy and crazy sort of drives them crazy. Where's Soter gone? Come on, Soter. I just made this very big. Oh, there, she must be down here somewhere. There we go. Come on, Soter, I'm chasing you now. Oh, Laura, come on. Oh, there we are. Oh, it's huge. I didn't realize it was that big. <laughs> so she's drinking from the infinity pool. And the bird is trying to get her to chase her. But Soter is kind of more clever than that nowadays. And realize that it's futile trying to chase this bird. But let's look at the sun. There we are again with the sun. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Magdala. To the sunrise stroll and chat as it comes right up over the Golan Heights. Almost completely up now. Let me get this a little different for you. Now that board is very far away and it was very clear on the screen. Welcome everybody, good morning. Great to have you. Here we are at Magdala, we're in a different spot. A couple of very precious things to show you here. One of my favorite trees in the world is this olive tree here. But we're seeing it counter light, but when we get on the other side, I'll show it to you in more detail. And we're standing here on a little road, a service road, uh, right between two sections of, of the first century port of Magdala, which was a fishing town. And this is archaeology we uncovered a number of years ago with the help of a lot of volunteers from Chile. They would come in the winter time. It was a special dig organized when we were digging almost 11 months of the year like crazy. And then we realized there was a lot more work to do with archaeology, not just dig, because you have to study it and publish it and everything. So we had to slow down. And besides, we found so many extraordinary things. I've been thinking maybe to do a little bit with you now and again in the sunrise chat and stroll to see some of this. So this is a first century port. We'll come back and talk about it later another day. Uh, it's, really, uh, it's really very special uh, to know that the fishermen were bringing in their fish from the Sea of Galilee here in the first century, before that as well, and um, right up to... Um, the destruction of the or the suppression of the Jewish rebellion when the the zealots rebelled against Rome starting in Caesarea Maritima the big port city on the Mediterranean and that whole process concluded with Masada and in between was the destruction of Jerusalem and before that was Gambla which is more or less up there where the Sun is rising and Magdala these were major stations in that conflict and uh, it was very rough here in Magdala. Flavius Josephus says that the age of the Sea of Galilee long here turned red with the blood. And a lot were taken into slavery and, and actually built the Isthmus in Corinth, uh, the, the, the channel um, to connect the two seas. Uh, I think it was a project under Nero. And um, so that's a little bit of history. And let's relax and enjoy this incredibly beautiful sunrise. Actually, this is a very nice spot, isn't it? Hope you're well today. Thank you for all the comments. A huge shout out and thank you to all the people who are sharing because I can't believe the numbers. Even for the German stroll and chat yesterday evening, yeah, you can check out the numbers there on the live stream, on the, uh, on the post. But they're just amazing. So some people are really, really 
you know, push, pushing the pedal to the metal and getting those, uh, getting it exposed to many, many people. And many people are viewing. And I thank you for coming. And I saw also that Vietnam has a lot of people. And just there's a Vietnam person coming in. So I say, um, come on, come on. That's the thank you word in Vietnamese. Can you imagine? So uh, thank you very, very much. Also another technicality. Um, somebody um, uh, sent me a suggestion about doing a moon, <laughs> a, a full moonrise uh, live stream. Uh, you know, I didn't, I, I'm, I'm thinking of, but I can't find that comment. So if somebody can, whoever wrote that can send it to me on a message in Messenger, uh, then I can have a better chance of finding it because it's, it's the challenge to wade down through hundreds of comments and reactions for which I'm very grateful and I try to see them all. But then to go back and find one that I missed or that I saw and wanted to deal with and didn't deal with yet. But um, uh, just so happy that you're, you're here and that we're in communication. Another little technical thing, if you do a follow on the page uh, and a like to the page, that will also help to... Uh, they're telling me that will help to bring the word to more people, this experience of this beauty of the Sea of Galilee. So right here as we enjoy this set, which is, I think is pretty beautiful. Uh, I hope you agree with me. Let's bring the tree, give the tree its share here. Uh, then, well actually there are two trees there, so I'll just separate a little here. You can see people walking there. Uh, they were there, I don't know how many hours of the night. And uh, there are people camping over near us. And they were having their party music, which thank God wasn't too wild last night, but it did keep me awake a while <laughs> in the middle of the morning. And there were like boats out there pumping out their music until about 5 a.m. this morning. So let's see what the good book is telling us. So we're uh, the second good book. The first good book is creation. That's the way some of the great fathers of the church said it, that God wrote two books, nature, creation, and scripture. So we're uh, in the letter to Timothy, and, and Paul is giving him instructions. This is called a pastor letter, teaching him to be a pastor. And that's a very special role, and it's a very special role in difficult times. And a lot of people today are pretty down on the situation today and it's difficult and challenging, that's for sure. But the more I think about it, you know, really, uh, when has it not been difficult? And just imagine when these fishermen were here in this port, Roman oppression, with a very big economic system, and they were able to sell their fish to Rome and obviously therefore get more money. There's more money in, in uh, export. And, but there were crucifixions going on, you know, and there was no talk of human rights. And there was uh, a lot of oppression, a lot of violence, a lot of extortion. Tax collectors were taking double and putting it in their pockets, sending up what they needed to send up, the line. And, uh, you know, the people were suffering, a lot of suffering. And in that world, Christianity emerges. Jesus emerges and the, and the first apostles, Mary Magdalene, this is her town here. Can you imagine her coming down here to get some fish for watching the, when the fishermen are coming in and getting some fresh fish for a nice meal for her friends? And maybe she, there's a rabbi coming and from Nazareth and she, she'd like to invite him to her home with her friends. And she comes down here and gets some fish, you know. The boats come in right here, people, where those boulders are. That's what the archaeologists tell us. This was all silted. So this was the edge of the town of Magdala. We'll talk more about that another time. So then, here we are with, in difficult times, you know, when is it not difficult? When is it not difficult? And there are joys in every time, and sometimes it's hard to find the joy. And other times, seeing it's very easy going and no trouble, but maybe there's a lot of corruption underneath, and then it all erupts. And people are impatient and people, uh, you know, rouse the crowd and all kinds of interests are jockeying and all kinds of dynamics are playing out. And so it's good to go back to, to Scripture and to read some lines, you know. And Paul is saying to Timothy, Beloved, so there's a great relationship between these pastors, a, a relationship of love. I charge you in the presence of God, 
and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead. So that's a pretty powerful background and paradigm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in this certainty. And by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent in proclaiming it, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. A lot of people sometimes don't want the word to be said. You remember some of the prophets in the Old Testament say that, you know, there, there was no word because the people didn't want it. And God said, okay, you don't want to hear the word? Okay, I'm respecting your freedom. God is the first one respecting human dignity. He created us free. And we're created for to understand. We've got an incredible mind. Imagine that we're connected here from East Malaysia to Alaska, from, from Mexico to Finland, from Japan to Denmark, on this morning's chat. Isn't that amazing? So the Lord has blessed us with an extraordinary mind, and not just for technical and high-tech things, but also to understand the meaning of life, to go for wisdom. There was a bird flying high over the trees there. And our spirit is so filled with awe in front of this creation. You know, but proclaim the word whether it be convenient or inconvenient. I know there are a lot of you people are very kind and you have beautiful comments about what's said here. And so you're thirsting and you want the word. There's the grace is pouring in your hearts and, and you love that. But then other people might be resistant and uh, find it hard. And I ask them also for patience with me and with others who preach the word. You know, sometimes maybe we're, uh, you know, we have our faults and our defects and our histories and the church has in general and it's a burden and we have to ask understanding and forgiveness for that so every time has its challenge and he uses very strong words he says be persistent whether it's convenient or inconvenient convince reprimand it's very hard to reprimand hard for parents it's nicer to bring ice cream home and the kids have a nice time and uh, everybody's happy and smiley but my, when there's a need for reprimand when there's a need for patience need for teaching. Teaching is laborious. Imagine teaching people love of the founding documents of a country, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and to raise up generations who know and love their identity and to build a, a life of justice and freedom so that there will be peace. These are big challenges and it's hard work to teach. It's easier just to go and see you know, have some, some little entertainment and just go out and play and all of that's part of life but the other part is too. From time to time, this is a very interesting comment. This is chapter 4 of Timothy and we're in the first verses, the first eight verses, right? That's what we're reading today. From time to time, Paul says, at, no, for the time will come, a time will come, when people will not tolerate sound doctrine but following their own desires and insatiable curiosity will accumulate teachers and stop listening to the truth and will be diverted to myths. See, the pagan world lived on myths and myths have a wonderful role and they're great, um, uh, can be great teaching for humanity. There's a lot of truth in myths. But, you know, when the Word of God became flesh and dwelt among us, that wasn't a myth. That was something very real, as real as this olive tree. How do you like this, people? Isn't that amazing? Push those hearts there because that brings it to other people. That's how uh, you're getting it across to other people, especially the, the, the red ones. They tell me that some guy wrote in there one, the other day and he said, push the red hearts. <laughs> he said that, that, that changes the logarithms. So while we're passing here, I want to show you this tree. Just to interrupt our story a little moment. Look here, look at this tree, people. Look, you can see through it. You can see a hole through the tree. You can see the port through the tree. That's the first century port right through this old olive tree. Isn't that amazing? Look at that tree. Look at the damage it suffered over history. Look at the way the branches were cut off, the pruning. And look at the fruitfulness. Look at the olives coming. In this old tree producing the olives. So many olives. Got a real tough pruning this spring. Every few years we give it a good pruning. 
and they were merciless <laughs> doing this work. Look at this people, look at this tree and it's still producing fruit. Ain't that amazing? Humanity, the church, even our own lives, you know, can suffer a lot and still produce wonderful fruit. We're looking there at the port again, first century port of Magdala. And welcome here to for all those who have joined us from to this is we call this the sunrise stroll and chat at the Sea of Galilee. Let's ponder a little those thoughts, you know, living in difficult times. And it's amazing that the psalm still is, I will sing of your salvation. We're still able to sing, no matter the, how tough the times are. And that reminds me of that incredible Polish man who did so much good, had such charity. And he was in the concentration camp of Auschwitz. And he volunteered to take the place of a companion who was condemned to death, the tenth in a list to make uh, amends for the one who escaped from the prison camp. And that was the way the Nazis punished them and put uh, terror over the entire camp. We're very close here, so let me just go on and let you see this in greater detail. Here's Mount Arbel. And I just love this spot here. <laughs> And besides, we have special sound effects. Japan, welcome, good morning. Oh, here we have these birds flying over here. Can you hear the water? That's where Soldier was drinking a little while ago. You saw her there drinking. And that's the port down there. First century port of Magdala. And here we have this beautiful scene. Look at the way that that um, architecture is designed. Let me show you this. So this window reflects in the pool. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? The only problem is the work keeping it clean, people. <laughs> our, our, our general manager says he doesn't like architects. Well, he used a stronger word. <laughs> because it's easy to put in a water system, or well, that's difficult in itself, but it's very hard to maintain them. A lot of work. Look at that, people. The sun reflecting in the mirror here. In the, not a mirror, it's a window. And we see, the sun is also reflecting on the lake, so we see a reflection of the sun, and a reflection of the reflection on the lake. And that reflection is coming in here to the infinity pool. <laughs> How many times reflected? And we're all called to reflect God's glory and spread it from one to another. Welcome everybody. We're enjoying the sunrise here at the Sea of Galilee at our Bagla stroll and chat. And it's wonderful to have you with us. Absolutely wonderful. So let's go down here a little closer to the water. Although I'd like to stop here. That's a nice view with that tree there, isn't it? Let's stop here for a moment so you can enjoy that. And I just want to finish up Paul's words to Timothy this morning. That would be probably about verse 8 of the fourth chapter of his second letter to Timothy. And he says, But you, when you have all these people, you know, turning to myths and everything. But you, be self-possessed. What does that mean? Take control of yourself. Be in charge of it. Don't give up. Don't fall apart when everybody falls apart. When everybody gives in to anger and negativity, we don't need to do that. Be self-possessed. Know who you are. You're in presence of Christ, the King of the universe, risen, and judge of the living and the dead. It's an incredible frame of, and footing of, of certainty, of surety of a, a position to be able with that solid ground to be able to pull somebody out that's sinking in the mud and he says be self-possessed in all circumstances when there's pain when there people are 
are uh, you know pouring out joy be self-possessed know that moderation that that uh, know yourself master yourself overcome yourself accept yourself know yourself accept yourself and have dominion over yourself be self-possessed put up with hardship wow put up with hardship be able to bear hard times perform the work of an evangelist you're telling good news that's the meaning of eo good and angelo that's an announcement a message angelus and eo angelus is a good message perform the work of a good messenger fulfill your ministry so I think this charge is for every baptized and ordained person today. Forever I will sing of your salvation, O Lord. Let us do that. I want to bring you out here through the little gate so we get down to the water, because I know you like the water. This is really another lovely morning, different morning, but lovely. How lovely. It's important to read a word of scripture, but it's also very important to ponder it in a moment of silence, a moment in our hearts. How are we dealing with hardship? The hardship of Corona, the hardship of all the civil unrest in the world, the hardship of war, imagine families, refugees, imagine the people who are migrants, who are dispossessed, All the people in prison, chained, and they hear that kind of noise every morning when their prison cell is approached, or their zone. The clanking of chains. I love seeing these young plants in the sunlight. Look at that coming out of that old trunk. Oh, there we got our two cranes. They just flew away. Can you see them? Oh, there's another one here. But that's a different, that's not a crane. She's right here in the center of the water. Let's hold on here, baby. You can help me to figure out what it is. We just landed here in the center of the water here in front of us. And when they hit the water, they go down under and they come up a few yards further away. Right in there. She's right in there, but she could emerge someplace else. Yeah, she's still there. Can you see her? It's right in the, like right now in the very center of the screen. And she's kind of half, she's right now under the water. Let me see if I can get close enough for you to see. The problem is, oh, there she is. She's more over here now and it's darker. Let me get this way a little bit. At some point she'll probably fly away. But she's in here in this dark area. I imagine she has good fishing here. If I come slowly, maybe she won't, won't. Oh, she's over here. Look, it's a completely black one. Wow, I'm sorry. I don't think you got to see her. She flew low against a black background. So I wasn't able to pick her up there. She might be over there still. Let's see, I can't do much about that now. So here we are at the Sea of Galilee. You want to put your toe in? Take off your sock first, otherwise you'll have to dry your socks. Or if you want to jump over here, you come over by email, come over by, by Facebook, and we can go out and swim. I'll be going to swim in a few minutes. <laughs> Oh, there's another bird just landing out there now. A little too far over for me to catch. So people, there we go. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? What a gift we are given. To participate in the joy of nature, the joys of creation. 
the new day. Let us pray for peace for the world. Could you hear the water there? So the time is, is running quickly and I didn't get to the Gospel again today. But the Gospel is very interesting. It's the end of chapter 12 of Mark's Gospel and it's uh, a strong word again about Jesus, uh, from Jesus about to be aware of the scribes and those who teach the faith. It's an amazing line, you know, beware of the scribes, those who study and teach and who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces. And they like seats of honor and places of honor at banquets. You know, they look, they come into the, the assembly for the banquet and they look around and say, oh, I'm that back table. <laughs> if I could be up there in the, in the front, you know, near the VIPs. You know, what are we looking for in life? And if we complain about destruction by others, we need to build up inside ourselves absolute and solid substance on, on creation, on God's creation, on his mystery of redemption. And then he talks about the widow and her might, the widow's might, and how she put in her substance, all her substance, substance in time of trouble. Whether your substance is small or big, not much of us can go out there and stop a riot, or resolve major structural problems of injustice. But everyone's little part counts, and the first little part counts inside our heart. And that's what also affects a marriage. It affects parent-children relationships. It affects uh, sibling relationships, neighborhood relationships, that neighbor that was very difficult, that never spoke, that never said hello. Little substantial prayers in our heart decisions in our heart not to be selfish, not to be angry, to be patient. People, it was wonderful having you this morning. Uh, I am feeling sometimes with the richness of the readings I don't get to do it all. And then if those of you who are interested, there's a live streaming on the Magdala Experience Facebook page and then if you wanted even just to to be in the homily part to hear the explanation after the readings and that's usually early in the mass so it's um, it's an option for you uh, thank you for being with us God bless you and thank you for being such a team and please send any questions you have and if you have anything personal you can send it on the messenger and uh, I'll try to to catch up if I can. Uh, may the Lord bless you and provide for you and give you the strength to be a substantial contribution in our world at this time of great need. From the core of your heart with your prayer, your generosity, your goodness, your motivation and not giving in and yielding to negativity. May the Lord bless you and keep you. See you later alligators. God bless you in the Sea of Galilee from our sunrise stroll and chat. It was wonderful having you. This will be on Facebook and also on, this is staying on this Facebook page and will be shared to the Magdala page and it will also be um, on YouTube, God willing, at some point as soon as I get it up there this morning, hopefully. <laughs>